Hi there, quick video today talking about a fun topic that really doesn't get explained a lot um, and a lot of people don't understand what it is, why it's done, or, or really um, what it's for, and that's the lock stitch and whip stitch on rope. It's a very important thing and it's crucial for safety on all double braid ropes and we're gonna talk about it right now. The thing that really inspired this video is this rope right here which got sent in to us recently for some repair work and one thing that we do at Not Rope Supply is a lot of repair work on large pulling ropes and this is as you can see here this is an inch and a quarter pulling rope that a customer sent to us um, one end is spliced and it's okay but the other end this splice uh, got broke somehow and they want us to repair it so it came into our shop and I saw this here and thought, wow, that is really something else. Whoever did this put a lot of time and effort into this whipping and stitching of the eye splice, but is that necessarily the right thing to do for this rope? Maybe yes, maybe so, and we're gonna talk about that right now. So what you see on the end of this is commonly referred to as a whip stitch or a lock stitch on an eye splice. They both mean the same thing. People use the term interchangeably, but they're both talking about the idea of locking the splice in place so it doesn't shift. Now, what does that mean and why is it important? I'll show you right here. On this particular rope, this is some double braid nylon, which means it's a nylon jacket over nylon core. And when we put these splices together, we pull that cover up over the core and then we make the eye splice. And we want it to stop at a specific spot so we get a specific measurement and a specific size eye. And as a safety thing, we need to actually uh, control this and lock it down so that the splice doesn't come undone. So on double braid nylons or uh, polyester over nylon, there's the potential where the, the splice could actually come apart. And if I pull this, you'll see now that the splice has come undone. Obviously, we don't want that. We want the splice to stay intact. So to do that, we would stitch the splice together. What we do at Knot and Rope Supply is kind of a neat thing and it makes the, the stitch very, very strong and very, very durable and very, very safe. And the process of doing that will actually leave one strand of the rope out and that will help us mark, and you can see on here we've got some ink, but that strand will actually mark where that splice needs to come up and finish. Once we get to that point, that strand will be sticking out. We know that the splice is in the right place, everything's perfect, and then we'll attach a needle to that and just stitch through here multiple times and stitch that in place. Once that's done, and I have a finished piece right here, again, this is uh, some double braid nylon, but once that's stitched, there's no way to pull that back. It's locked in there safely. It's a, a splice that is now locked and stitched. If you look at this, versus this you can see some big differences. This has lots of thread on the outside. This one does not. Does that mean that this isn't as good as that one? Well actually when you think about it and when you actually analyze this, this one is much better because rather than just wrapping it with a lot of twine, we have stitched through here multiple times. Up to eight times we've got a stitch going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth through here. And it's almost invisible until you look and see where the where the the rope, the cover strand is actually stitched through here. And it's it's hard to see, but when you know what you're looking for, you can see it. So not only do you get a perfect color match, but those stitches are very secure in there and they're hidden quite well so that you don't get any abrasion on there that could cut those off. Um, here's an example of a, um, and this is a, a major manufacturer that makes this, and this is just the tail end of a utility pulling rope. And I cut this one apart to save you the work. But if you look at this, um, on the outside, the stitching was just this decorative wrapping right here. It really looked cool. It was a lot of work, and whoever did it uh, really did a nice job as far as the, the wrapping of it. However, you could see there was nothing really here to lock that in. It was just a decorative wrap on the outside, but nothing was penetrating the rope, the cover, and the core to lock it all in. A uh, similar type of idea here. A lot of work went into this. <laughs> um, it looks great, and this thing's like a baseball bat. You could probably drive a nail in, a, in some two by fours with this, um, but is it doing anything to hold it in there? At this stage in the game, because it's been pulled on so much, it's probably nice and solid, but there's a lot of work that went in here that they probably didn't need to do. 
As it turns out, this rope right here is a polyester over Dyneema construction, which is a little bit different type of animal. Uh, that's what we call a class two splice. And I have one of those right here, albeit a smaller rope. And this is what that stitch would look like if you were actually to see inside of it. Because this rope is core dependent, which means the core is doing all the work. The, the cover on here is polyester, but inside of here is some Dyneema rope. The core is doing all the work. So in that case, with this splice, we can leave the cover on there, but just feed it off to the side. And you can see that right here. We cut it with a hot knife and then to lock that down so nothing shifts around, we will do a whip stitch where we'll wrap the rope with the wax whipping twine and then stitch through the top and the bottom on one side and then the other. So in effect, you're getting the twines crossing over on the top and on the bottom as well. So you're getting a very secure attachment on there and you don't have to worry about that shifting as well. The only theoretical drawback to something like this, and it's a highly unlikely scenario, but this is the argument that people would have about it, is that because all these, um, the whipping twine is exposed like this, and sometimes these are in high wear and high abrasion areas, is that whipping twine could wear away or it could get cut, and then you'd basically lose it. Um, similar to what we had right here. I just cut that off and uh, I was able to pull that right out. It's highly unlikely, but to prevent something like that or forestall any problems, that's one of the advantages of using this method right here. It's stitched back and forth in there, very hidden, very protected. So if one was to happen to catch or snag or cut off of there, you've still got plenty of backup. On some splices, like this right here, this is some arborist rope. You'll see a little different lock stitch or whip stitch combination. On the exterior, you can see the rope that's, there, the whipping twine that's wrapped around here. And then it's stitched through the outer jacket in two places, on the top and on the bottom. So you've actually got four, you've got the, the whipping twine crossed through there on the top and on the bottom. The irony with this, and this is a, a thing that's very prevalent in arborist ropes, whether it's a 24 strand rope or a 16 strand rope, is stitching the eye. The funny thing is that this rope will be a polyester over polyester. So it's a polyester jacket over a polyester core. Once we seat that on there and it's loaded, it's virtually impossible to get that splice taken apart when it's not stitched. Um, when it's stitched like that, it becomes even harder. But because it's a, a safety thing, an arborist, you know, they want to see that on there. We do it even though I'll tell you as a climber myself, you could climb on this without a stitch and not have any problem at all because of a polyester over polyester construction. It's just very firm. It's very tough. And once that's loaded on there, I can tell you, you wouldn't be able to pull that out. It's just almost impossible, but that's one type of whip stitch. And we do that here at non rope supply with all of our, uh, with all of our splicing on the arborist rope, but that is a lock stitch or whip, whip stitch that you'll commonly see. And we do it on all of those. Um, but on the double braid nylons or the polyester over nylon combination, we'll do something more like this where we'll stitch it through the strands. Um, it's hidden, it's a great color match, it's strong, and it's the best thing that I've ever seen as far as stitching those. So that's one thing that you'll see from us. So there's a quick video on the whip stitch, lock stitch um, debate, what it is, what it's not, why it's important. So if you order dock lines from us, you will see something like this. It's very, very secure on there. And our pulling ropes as well. If we're doing custom pulling ropes, this is the type of stitch that we'll put on there. The primary driver for us is safety first and foremost. We want something that's gonna be safe and secure out in the field, safe and secure for the splice and safe and secure for the end user. And that's why we go with this. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean that anything else is bad per se, but we've found this to be the best solution. And hopefully that answers some questions because occasionally people ask us about that and this video will help explain it a little bit more. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us here at Not Rope Supply. You can reach us at 419-873-8300. Thanks again and have a great day.